good afternoon, everyone. Um, warm welcome to you all. We're just going to wait a few minutes. Um, although we've got uh, already 144 on the call, um, I think we're expecting around 200. So we'll just wait a few more minutes to allow people time to get in on the webinar. Thank you. This is when we should have some elevator music or something, Anne, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, for everybody that's uh, uh, joined us today, uh, I'm really sorry you can't see each other, uh, but that's the uh, software that we're using today, and I'll explain a bit more about that. We seem to have settled around the 150 mark. Um, so with as time is uh, really crucial today, and we really would like to finish, around two o'clock. I think we better get started. So as I said, a, a very warm welcome to you all. Uh, my name is Anne Jones and I'm chair of the Public Affairs Committee at NFWI. Uh, while most of the attendees today are WI members, we're also joined by members of the clim other Climate Coalition organisations. Um, I'm also pleased to say that we're joined by uh, Lynn Stubbings, the National Chair, Julia Roberts, the Honourable Treasurer, Jero Stone, who is the other Vice Chair, and some other trustees from the National Board and some other staff members. So today's uh, Craftivism and Climate Action event uh, has been organised by the NFWI Public Affairs team and the Climate Coalition to round off 2021's celebration for Show the Love, our annual campaign to protect the things that we love for climate change. And I'm delighted that you've all joined us today for this closing event. Now, before we start, a few housekeeping tips. Um, as we have registered over 200 people and we're currently at over 150, uh, we decided to do this talk a little bit differently uh, and have a webinar rather than your normal Zoom call. So as I said earlier, you're unable to see each other. You will only be able to see the speakers. Um, you are also unable to unmute yourself to ask questions verbally, but don't worry about that because your voice will be heard in one way or the other. Um, you will see there's a Q&A box, so please use the Q&A box to submit any questions that you have for the panellists, but also any technical questions that you may have because this will be monitored and your question will be answered. Um, if you see a question that's already been asked by another participant uh, and you would like to see that question answered, you can click, click the thumbs up next to the question. This will help us prioritise your questions towards the end of the session to sh make sure we ask the most popular questions. And we will be leaving about 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of the event for the panellists to answer your questions. But any unanswered questions we will be looking at them after the event and we'll try to get the answers to you. So just to let you know formally that we will be recording this session, uh, but as we're doing this through the Zoom webinar, uh, the camera will only record the faces of the speakers. So we will be recording from now on. This session will be available on NFWI's YouTube channel after the event today, so you can catch up on something that you've missed, or you can encourage friends or family that haven't been able to join us today to view it again. Now, as an introduction, uh, craft has always played a vital role in our campaigns for change throughout history. Uh, going back quite a while, the suffragettes used embroidery skills to create intricate campaign banners to take on marches. And they also produced jewellery in the purple and green colours of their logo. Dorcas clubs are still used by women from the Caribbean diaspora to discuss their experiences of the Windrush scandal and to discuss migratory issues. And in the 80s and 90s, relatives and partners of people who died from AIDS came together to produce the UK AIDS quilt, a quilt made up of panels four metre squares in size. That size was because it's the size of an average coffin. And they made these to remember loved ones who died from AIDS, a very powerful quilt. 
So craft, as you can see, has also played a huge role in environmental campaigns, particularly in this campaign, the Climate Coalition's Show the Love campaign, where we ask everyone to craft green hearts to send to their MPs to call for change, and also to craft green hearts for people in their communities to raise awareness of the people, places and planet we want to protect from climate change. And in today's session, we will be looking at the use of craft to help us call for climate action over this very important climate year. Now, firstly, we will be hearing from Sarah Corbett. Uh, she's the founder of the Craftivist Collective. And you may know a bit about Sarah already from the recent BBC4 documentary. But we will be hearing more about her journey into craftivism how she has used craft to campaign to make positive changes and top tips for craftivists to make sure their craft as is, is as impactful as possible. From the NFWI Public Affairs team, we have Fiona Thomas, our campaign organiser, and she will be highlighting some of the ways WI members have used Green Hearts to lobby their MPs and raise awareness of the need to take urgent climate action over this year's Show the Love campaign. Fiona will also be letting you know how you can use your crafting skills to support the NFWI's climate change campaign in the run-up to COP26. And finally, last but not least, uh, we're also joined by Clara Goldsmith. Clara is the campaign's director at the Climate Coalition. Uh, a good friend to the WI and known by what many of you already, I'm sure. And she will be telling us about the projects that have grown from people like yourselves crafting green hats and some of the future opportunities that you take to use your crafting skills to support the Climate Coalition projects. And this will in turn put pressure on the United Government to make COP26 a success, something I know that we all want to ensure happens. So without further ado, I think we'd better move on and hear our first speaker and give a warm welcome to Sarah Corbett. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Anne. And thanks everyone for having me. I've been loving seeing on Instagram and Twitter, lots of WI groups that I've given talks to in the past, say hello again, who I know are on this call. Um, so it's great to connect with everyone. So as Anne said, I'm gonna say a little bit about my journey into craftivism and then focus on the top tips. I've only got 10 minutes, so I'll try and be quick. Um, but you'll, most of you know, I've got so much to say that you can find out more afterwards. So my background is in activism, not craft. So it might be different to some of you guys. Um, I grew up in a low income area in Liverpool in the 80s um, with high unemployment, lots of health issues, lots of um, inequality that you could see firsthand. And I grew up in an activist community. My dad's still the local minister there and my mum now is a nun. And I believe deeply that activism works, which is why we're all on this call, because we all believe it can work and it does work and it shapes history in the long term. Um, and it's really important to do. But what I noticed as an activist, I ended up doing campaigning at, from the age of three into school and then working as a, a professional campaigner for the likes of Christian Aid and Oxfam and working for the Department for International Development. I still do a lot with charities and organisations like the WI, as you know. Um, but what I found was really powerful was that craft was an incredible tool to add to the activism toolkit so when i talk about craftivism i want us to see it as another tool in the toolkit which is why i've got my rusty craft box in the bottom corner of the screen i want you to see craftivism not so much as a movement we don't have a petition movement or a march movement but as a useful tool that in certain times with certain contacts and contexts it's the right tool to use but to complement your other forms of activism so don't see it as great i'm gonna only use craftivism as my tool for activism especially if you love craft that's very tempting do see it as a tool and at certain times it's useful to use and at other times it might not be so useful but what i noticed throughout using craftivism over the last over a decade now i set up the collective in um 2009 after people around the world wanted to join in my projects what i noticed was the how it could be most effective 
is by threading gentleness through it. If you Google craftivism, you'll find lots of different approaches. I always say it's a little bit like punk. You've got punk music where you've got all these different bands that sound completely different and look very different, but they're under that umbrella. I see the Craftivist Collective as under that umbrella of craftivism, but our approach is gentle protest. So I want to talk about three ways that I think gentleness threads through um, craftivism to make it even more powerful and for you to sort of see your craftivism as honing your craft in craftivism. So the next slide is the first thing I noticed when I picked up a needle and thread and I learned to craft from YouTube um, as an adult. I didn't learn as a child so I always say anyone can do it. The first thing I noticed was the process of using craft. So when I'm talking about gentleness, I'm talk, not talking about being passive or weak, um, but very much about making sure that you thread compassion through what you do, strategic thinking, and that you channel your anger and sadness into something productive and effective that's done in a loving way that fits your values. And the process really helped me with that anger issue and that sadness and sometimes that apathy of thinking problems are so big, what can little old me do? And just by threading my needle, I noticed for the first time when I threaded a needle how shaky my hands were, how shallow my breath was, how tight my shoulders were. And as an activist who was part of lots of groups and even led some activist groups, I thought that actually we don't make much time to check in with ourselves, to check how are we feeling? Are we burnt out or are we sluggish and could do more? How, you know, how is our health? How is our mental health? Especially in the pandemic at the moment, we've got to be careful so we can be sustainable and healthy campaigners. And just by threading my needle and doing these slow, you know, you can't craft fast. If you do, you might break your thread or, or um, make a knot. Just by slowing down and being the tortoise, it made me really challenge myself of what baggage am I bringing to my craft? What presumptions might I be bringing? What anger or sadness? What unhealthy things am I bringing? And how can I use the process to calm down, slow down, and actually think more critically. So I know a lot of people who loved craft because they can then forget about the world. But I think one major thing about doing craftivism that's different to some craft is that it's about using that process for critical thinking. So using the comfort of craft with that repetitive hand action or whether you're doing mindful coloring in or different things with your hands you can use the process to ask yourself quite uncomfortable questions because you are using your head, hands and heart together, which is very comforting and good for our well-being. So using the process to ask yourself, what are my values and how am I threading them through how I live, what I buy, how I speak to people? What do I care about and how can I be part of the solution in a way that's sustainable for me, but has the most impact possible? It gives you time to think through what might be stopping me from campaigning. Do I need more knowledge? Do I need more confidence? Do I need to join a WI to be part of it more? Or is there a campaign group I want to join in more with? Using that process to ask yourself some uncomfortable questions about how you can be the best global citizen you can be and the best climate campaigner this year, especially, I think is a really important part of craftivism that often we forget about using the power of the process. So that's my challenge for you. And we have craft a thought questions in all of our projects. So we have three in all of our kits, like our heart kits, but also online in all of our projects and in our books as well. So you can use them to either think on your own or to do it as a group, whether it's with your Women's Institute on Zoom or whether your, your family or friends or housemates at home. These questions can help you facilitate those discussions and really delve into it as a group or just reflect deeply on your own, knowing you're using your hands in a productive way so you don't end up in a downward spiral. The second slide is about the power in the product. So you'll see on the top right, we've got our green heart badges. And this year we've been specifically focused on stitching our constituency name onto the banner and then posting them to our MP to wear, to show their commitment to protecting their constituents and constituency and to encourage the government to make really bold um, leadership on, on COP26 in November in Glasgow. 
but we also make gifts for power holders as critical friends. So some of you might know our pack bar campaign where we asked Marks and Spencers to pay the living wage to their staff, which they weren't doing. And instead of standing outside their AGMs with placards and megaphones or sending bags of petitions or lots of other forms of activism that can be useful at different times, that wasn't working for a few years. So with um, the charities that were campaigning, so they got in touch with us and said, what gentle craftivism do you think you could do? So what we did instead was make bespoke handkerchiefs, which you can see in the top left-hand corner, to the board members. So we very focused in on 14 board members. I asked craftivists from across the UK who were core customers of Marks and Spencers because we knew that they would listen to their customers more than people who didn't look or weren't their customers in my base and we got everyone to look at everything about their power holder so in this case it was the board members but in the green heart case it was mps and we said look at everything about that power holder that you're engaging not just their job but who are they as a human being are they introvert extrovert are they flamboyant are they creative are they obsessed with sports do they love business try and figure out what makes them tick and make your gift something that they would like so it's not so much about you and your, you know, likes for style and fonts and colours, but if you were them, how would you feel being given this gift? Would it feel encouraging and something to say, I believe in you to use your power for good? Or would it be patronising or seen as manipulative? How can you craft your message and your aesthetics and the feel of your handmade object into something that could be a real encourager and also something to hold them account if they could do better. So that's the power of the product in terms of giving gifts to power holders, which this year is so critical with climate. You know, that's what I want you to think about of the product is about them, not about us. You know, we so slip, I do it all the time. I slip into, well, I like this color. And I always have to say, okay, let me see what colors do they wear? What patterns do they wear? And try and think what would they like and how can I engage them where they are, which is much more powerful for them to receive and something small and bespoke um, with a handwritten letter that's got a more, more robust campaign to say why you want them to support whatever issue it is and how you've thought through all of the wins, all of the benefits of for them of how to, why they should support this campaign as well as the benefits for others. So think about the power of the product and what are you threading through your object that then you can give to power holders. And with the MS campaign, just to say it did lead to 50,000 staff get a pay increase to be in line with the living wage. And the chair of the board said it was the most powerful campaign he, they'd ever experienced. He told me that on the quiet at the AGM the following year. Um, I don't think he'd say it publicly, but it does show that, sorry, I have a siren going past my door. It does given these gifts does show that it might be quiet, it might be humble, it might be small, it might be something you don't share online or you only share afterwards, but actually thinking about how you help people feel in a particular way is just as important as the facts and stats that you give them. And the third one is about the power in the public sphere. So that can mean very different things. Anyone that follows me on social media with the Crafters Collective will know that I share a lot on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, as a way to create more conversation and to, for things to be shareable, to create conversations with strangers as well as friends, and just tools to to use how you want to use them in your conversation. So it might be that the power of the process, you share your crafter thoughts. So tweet what you were thinking while you were making it. You can share the process of what you make, whether it's your beautiful window display saying I'm halfway through it. What message do you think I should put that would encourage people and not shame them? Or what would empower and inspire people but not be too confused and people don't know what it's about. It's a great way to sort of be part of that global community and that digital community as well as your local community by sharing your craft of thoughts, your process and your product. And then share some of the responses you have and the impact you have as well, because you never know how it influences people. All of my work is based in neuroscience and psychology and um, looking at everything from the colours to the senses 
And it's amazing when I get replies from people, sometimes emails or hidden little conversations, or it's public to say, by seeing you do this, I've decided to have a go. So by your friends and your family and your community seeing what you're doing, it's actually an incredible tool for mirroring, which is for them to say, oh, well, if they could do it, maybe I could have a go. And sometimes they're directly influenced by you and sometimes subconsciously they're influenced right by you. So I think that's why the quotes from Gandhi about be the change you want to see is still so relevant and so powerful is, you know, share your failures, your weaknesses, your struggles with your craftivism, share it all for us all to encourage each other and challenge each other if there's a way that we could be more effective and strategic. And the last slide is just to say, as you can see, there's so much to say and I don't wanna overwhelm you with strategy, but I do want you to think through how can you hone your craft in craftivism. And because we're using physical resources, we have to be even more careful to focus on quality, not quantity and about the environmental impact we have and the ethics involved with the resources we use. So do find out more on our website, our book, our manifesto is a 10 point manifesto that you can download in different languages online. And the WWF um, used it last year to change a law in Spain to protect migrating birds. So it is a good 10 point manifesto that hopefully will help you in any of your craftivism plans for this year as well. Hope that was helpful, Anne. Thank you, Sarah. That was amazing. I don't think uh, any of us could uh, listen to that and not be fully inspired into doing our bit of craftism uh, because it does make a difference. And I really like the fact that you felt that it not only helped with mental health, uh, but it made you think about the bigger picture when you were crafting. So full of ideas there. Uh, and we'll hear again from Sarah later. So now we'll move quickly on to uh, Fiona Thomas and to Clara Goldsmith and they're both going to uh, update us a little with what's been happening in 2021 on Show the Love. I think Fiona first. Yes, thank you Anne. Um, I think so quickly I'm sure I think Sarah's going to run through what she's been doing for Show the Love first and then I'll come in with my points. So next slide after this. Yeah, I mean, I've just mentioned it to you and you can find out more. So yeah. just that we've been focusing on um, stitching the constituency names onto heart badges to give to RMP. Some people have done them into key rings or hanging things, um, but it's really good, especially, you know, it's good for everyone. So it's good if you have a, a challenging relationship with your MP. It's a good way to start afresh and say, I believe in you to do, you know, to be part of the solution this year and help lead the way. Um, so, and it's also good for your MP who might be doing lots already. That's really brilliant. It's a great way to encourage them and thank them. So if you think about a lot of MPs, they get targeted by people who want things. They often don't get told, thank you for what you've already done. And we hope that you can do more this year. So remember that MPs, you know, whatever, uh, relationship you have or if you don't have one at all it's a good way to start or it's a good way to carry it on and you'll see Kizzy's the first locum MP in the UK on the the top left hand corner she wears her Walthamstow heart in most of her meetings and she said it's and there's a blog on our website of why she made it herself and why she wears her heart as a way to create conversations in her council meetings as well as her meetings um with with Stella Creasy, who she was locum MP for. And you'll, you can see other examples on our website and social media of how it can be used in different ways, but focusing on using your constituency name to say, to make it really accountable to say, what are you doing to support us as constituents and beyond? Thank you, Fiona. Yeah, so next slide, please, Beth. So as you can see here, um, and as Sarah said as well, there's massive power in your green hearts and in the product. So um, we know just from the NFWY how important they are to help start conversations about climate change and to encourage um, all kinds of people, including your MP, to pursue climate action. So here you are some examples of some hearts that WI members and other members of the Climate Coalition have produced um, for show the love which they've sent to their MP. So the one on the right was crafted by Kathy Fairley and she's a WI member from Scarborough Seagulls. And as you can see, Kathy's tried, um, well, Kathy's 
really worked on making this personal to her MP, um, Greg Knight. So Greg Knight's initials are um, embroidered onto the heart. And then in the corner, you can see that she's also embroidered COP26 because she wants to see climate action, robust climate action ahead of COP26. So on the right, you can see some um, handmade show the love cards that Emma Milson, she's the pe president of Peckham WI has made. So she sent that to her local MP, who I believe is Harriet Harman, um, to call for robust climate action um, in the years going forward and in the ramp to COP specifically. And in the middle, you can see a beautifully embroidered heart um, for Tom Randall, who's the MP for Geldin. So next slide, please. So yeah, here's some more examples. So again, you can see um, just how much care and consideration WI members have been, and members of the Climate Coalition have been putting in to their green hearts. So I particularly want to draw your attention to the envelope going to Faye Jones MP, who seems to be a very lucky MP. Um, that is a cross-stitched envelope. So um, as you can see, the cross-stitched hearts in varying green colours, um, her address has even been cross-stitched onto it. And there's a handmade postcard there as well, asking her to show the love. So that's fantastic. So next slide, please, Beth. So as Sarah said, um, it's really impactful when this year in particular, when we haven't been able to get outside as much um, uh, you know, due to the pandemic, um, people have been using their windows to have show the love um, green heart displays like no other. So on the right, you can see um, in a circle, you can see some green hearts and then um, there's some messages to tip for climate action in the center. Um, again, another beautiful display um, of green hearts in the middle. And then on the end, then you can see some, I think they're lino printed green hearts, which again have been put up in um, a WI member's window, asking their, uh, their neighbours to show the love again. So next slide, Beth. So yeah, yeah, more examples. Um, I'm sure you you all know we could go on for ages with all these examples, and we've just picked um, some of them. So um, the bottom left hand corner, you can see um, some pledges that WI, a WI member has written onto some hearts and put up in their window to inspire change. Um, you can see some embroidered hearts, hearts attached to trees and using the natural environment, and then a tissue paper heart, which um, I believe is designed to catch the light as well and be extra effective. So next slide, please, Beth. So an element um, outside of the home then, WI members have again um, used local businesses to um, ask them to put together some window displays, um, spreading the message about show the love. So in the middle, the center picture, um, that is a local business in the Cardiff North constituency. So it's called Yechida. So it means good health in Welsh and it's a health food shop. Um, and it happens to be right across from um, the MP on the right, that's Anna McMurrin, right across from her constituency office. So that caught her attention and she came over and clearly had a bit of a photo shoot with the business owner. But um, there's so many ways members have done it. So um, on the right, on the left, you can see um, people have encouraged members of the community to go out and attach their own climate pledges to that heart and make their own pledge in their own home. And then on the right, then you can see some beautiful green heart cards, which have been made. Um, I think they look like pine cones, but they're certainly in the shape of a heart. And then there's a lovely cute bird on top. So they were sent to local, um, to family and friends and then to the MP then. So next slide, please, Beth. Um, so this WI members in particular, but also other members of the Climate Coalition have really gone to town to show the commun their local communities the love. So there's lots of pictures, pictures there, but I'm going to touch on some particular examples. So um, the picture in the middle, you can see with the red telephone box, um, that has been yarn bombed. I'm so I'm sure some of you are familiar with the concept of yarn bombing, but this was Wellingor WI, and so um, I'm told it's a it was a clandestine yarn bombing. So members of the local community went to bed the next day, and they woke up, and it the community was covered in these green hearts. So 
it was so effective that it made the press. So this was covered by BBC Look North and made the local radio stations as well and really spread the word about the importance of taking climate action. Um, on the bottom left, you can see a green heart display um, by Little Stanny WI. So this was made in conjunction with the Bridge Wellness Gardens. So this is a charity based in Ellesmere Port where the garden is. And um, this caught the attention of um, passers-by and encouraging people to go over and make their own pledges. And the final example that I want to talk about is the, the love installation. So as you can see the word love, that was made by um, WI Dorman's Land. And so they worked to create a community art installation. So there's some hearts on it, but the main purpose was to encourage others to go over and attach their hearts. So again, really promoting a community feel during the pandemic and during lockdown. So I'm going to pass over to Clara now. So for Clara to talk about how these hearts are, are growing and growing and growing and got the attention of businesses and corporations. Thanks so much, Fiona. And yeah, we've been really overwhelmed by the kind of real explosion of creativity that we've seen during Show the Love this year. Um, you know, we we didn't, it's a, it's a funny year. Um, and so we didn't really know how people were going to participate until we started seeing all these wonderful images flow in on sh social media. And actually what's brilliant is, you know, some of them are um, individuals, groups sharing their green hearts they've crafted, but actually lots of them are people discovering a display on a, on a kind of local tree on their walk and posting and finding out more. And, and you know, that's exactly what this is supposed to be about. It's about um, sharing the message of climate action with your peers, in your community, with your family. And, you know, so many of us come together, use crafting to come together with our work colleagues or with our book group or with our WI group um or others and you know part of it is is the making of the green heart and then the message that sends to decision makers or to your local community but it's also just about the conversations that happen um you know while that crafting is going on so obviously you know I, I i know that some of those have happened virtually and so some of those conversations are continuing which is brilliant but it's also been great to see that we can continue to to have to kind of pass that message on in a different way this year um, and um, and that's been really encouraging and, and actually um, you know I suspect given that we've seen lots of people um, come back to crafting or pick up new crafts anew in lockdown that we've seen new people take part um, and actually you know local groups um, friends of the earth groups or others who wouldn't typically get involved with the crafting element of show the love have really embraced it this year, have made super creative videos um, and, um, and have got involved in kind of uh, really lovely um, kind of chalking in their local area. And, and, uh, and again, that's, that's been really encouraging to see. Um, in terms of the impact of Green Hearts, we're still in the middle of um, Show the Love this year. So, um, you know, uh, we've seen, for example, MPs participate, MPs posting on social media when they've see, received beautiful hearts which is great but I think we're, we're um, you know we can't say this is what Show the Love has done but uh, in terms of what's happening in 2021 but we know that that green hearts and the power of green hearts have really um, have really helped to kind of make a change in previous years so in 2019 um, everybody was encouraged to send their green heart to their MPs with a message about um, the net zero emissions target that we were really campaigning for the government to adopt and then a few months later, um, that happened. The UK became the first major economy to adopt net zero emissions target. Um, you know, and that's something we now in this year really, really need to push the government to take action to kind of meet that target and, and to get to net zero emissions as soon as possible. But, but actually the UK getting in there and, and kind of moving fast um, has meant that lots of other countries have followed suit. And, and again, in this year when it's about the whole world joining together at COP26 to say, this is what we're going to do in the next decade to get emissions down to as low as possible um, and to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. We need the UK to be encouraging others. Uh, and so, yeah, we saw France follow quickly, then New Zealand and, and China and others and, and other big emitters are now setting their own net zero targets. Um, so, so that's been brilliant to see. And then last year as well, we had 
a huge number of MPs take part um, and, um, and, and supporters were asking the government uh, at that point, um, pre-pandemic or when the pandemic was just creeping up on us, um, COP26 was supposed to be happening in November of 2020 to, to take ambitious action. And, and we saw a number of steps um, that were taken in 2020. So we now have um, a, a kind of world leading um, target in terms of making sure that we have less polluting vehicles on our roads and um, the government has agreed to stop financing fossil fuels overseas and a number of asks that were part of um, the um, ambition that we were pushing for as part of Show the Love. But I mean, uh, the other thing, so it's great to see MPs still taking part and participating this year on social media, but actually what we saw last year when we were still able to do face-to-face -face events is MPs picking green hearts um, when we do drop-in events. And, and that goes back to what Sarah was saying, where, you know, if you think about your audience, and actually, so this is, this is an example where there are, there are kind of huge numbers of green hearts for the kind of hundred or whatever MPs that are coming through an event to pick from. So it's about a variety of green hearts rather than having one particular person in mind. But you can see the care that they take to pick their green heart that they're going to wear. And the ones that really love their green hearts wear them pretty much all year round. So, um, yeah, thinking about um, exactly the things that Sarah talked about, that what, what the interest might be. So sometimes it's got, it, because it's got a particular species, the constituency, obviously, is something that will really resonate. But sometimes it is just a style. You know, there was a minister last year who picked a particularly flamboyant um, kind of feather covered green heart because that was what was particularly attractive. So, yeah, it's um, all of this stuff makes a difference. And um, and, and, you know, I hope that we'll, I think the other thing that's happened this year is that because of COVID, some of these green hearts aren't getting to people as quickly as possible. So I think what we'll start to see in the next few weeks is post-parliamentary recess, lots of MPs receiving their green hearts um, and, and, and hopefully um, following up with constituents, because that's, that's the other thing that, you know, we, we hear is that MPs, you know, and again, Sarah touched on this, that the power of green hearts is that um, MPs tend to get people moaning at them and in a way you know the green heart comes with an ask it's not as if it's a gift on its own but it's a gift that has had a huge amount of creativity and love poured into it and and carries the personality of the person that made it so it doesn't feel like you know MPs don't like and we hear this a lot the kind of template letter where they get huge numbers of the same thing clogging up their inbox and obviously you know that is a way of demonstrating concern but it doesn't carry the power of the personal um and you know we've had a, a secretary of state um in a kind of gdpr compliant way track down a wi member to her house because she he was so grateful that she'd made this beautiful thing um for him and and you know that is a memorable moment so you know in amongst all the correspondence that they get these are the things that decision makers remember because they're different. And, and often what we see um, during Show the Love is as MPs and particularly, you know, the new MPs, the new intake of Conservative MPs that, um, that, the, that many campaigners are trying to target, you know, often the only interaction that they will have with, with kind of climate activism will be the Green Heart because it comes from a local constitu constituent um, and, it's, and it's deeply personal and, and has a message that they're able to share. So um, yeah, please carry on um, in this important year. Um, and I'm also gonna just touch on a few of the other people who've taken part in, in Show the Love over the years. Um, uh, you know, that, that actually this is a moment for, um, for, for individuals to take action, but also for all sorts of businesses um, and organizations to talk about what they want to protect from climate change. So, um, so yeah, here you can see BT, um, there's a kind of London landmark, the BT Tower, which, um, which um, broadcast a message um, on our Good News Day last week that, that, look, that talked about Show the Love and protecting um, what you love from climate change. Um, with the umbrellas there, you have a, an MP and local school, school children who came together during Show the Love to mark Lord's Cricket Ground, um, switching to 100% renewable energy, and again, you know, what we really like to see is um, businesses taking ambitious steps forward to, um, to, to talk about how they're tackling the climate emergency during Show the Love um, and using the power of green hearts in their own way. And then um, below that, you can see 
Um, it's a Blue Peter presenter with some local school children at, um, at Old Trafford, which is Manchester United's ground. Um, and for a few years now, Manchester United have worked with us um, during Show the Love to bring hundreds of local school children together to make their own green hearts, to talk about what they want to protect from climate change, but also then to become ambassadors in their local communities, in their schools. Um, and um, it's, you know, they talk about it being one of the most effective campaigns that they're involved with. And even during the pandemic this year, so obviously that is not from this year, the photos from this year are, uh, are kind of children on, in classrooms rather than at Old Trafford um, or at home on Zoom. But um, yeah, they were really keen to continue it this year. And so we had 25 local schools um, take part in a virtual workshop with us um, and Man United. Um, and, um, and yeah, we've had brilliant feedback from that. And then, yeah, and businesses um, all, all over the country joined with us and the um, COP26 um, unit with the Together for Our Planet campaign last week um, for our Good News Day to talk about what they were doing to take action on climate change and to, to, to try and um, flood social uh, for a change. So um, yeah, here's O2, but we had lots of other um, big businesses get involved um, and arts institutions like the Tate. So, um, so that was kind of really wonderful to see and, and hopefully felt like a real moment of togetherness as um, everybody you know, uh, use the power of green hearts to talk about climate change and, and, and the future that they wanted to see. And, and um, just briefly, I'm gonna to touch on, yeah, what is an important year and what we have coming up. So um, as, as others have mentioned, we have the big UN climate summit, COP26 coming up in November. This is probably the most important um, summit that the UK government is going to host in our lifetimes. It will decide the trajectory of climate action for the next decade. So it's really, really important that we can ramp up action and, and to see kind of really ambitious steps taken um, in advance of COP26. And we have a number of campaign moments um, uh, which will um, allow people to do that and which use craftivism um, to, to help spread that message. So the first thing that's happening is in June when there's another international summit uh, called the G7, which is taking place in Cornwall. And that will be the very first moment that the new president, Joe Biden, new US president, um, comes over to the UK. And obviously, um, climate action is really at the heart of uh, Joe Biden's new agenda. And um, and is a is a is a kind of potential bridge um, for the um, for the UK government and the US government. So we're hopeful that that will show some steps that can be taken, and um, there'll be some crafting as part of that um, that, that talks about togetherness, and we'll use paper chains. The other thing that's happening is in September, where we will have a big climate festival um, with lots of crafting opportunities, um, and then at COP. We are working with um, Artichoke, a big um, uh, public art um, organization who um, organized processions, which was which celebrated um, the anniversary of women getting the vote, which many of you might have been involved in. And, um, and we will be asking people to craft things out of recycled paper and cardboard to create um, a kind of Noah's Ark procession as part of that. And we, I think we're running out of time, so I am going to hand back to Anne now. Thank you, Clara. Uh, yes, time is running away from us. Uh, I always knew it would. It, it's always tough to get such a big message across in such a very short time, and especially when we have so much enthusiasm, uh, both from our speakers um, and also from what members have been doing and members of the Climate Coalition have been doing. Really inspiring to see all the items that have been produced, um, all the action that's been taken, and the fact that the youth uh, is involved as well as business. So well done to everyone. Uh, thank you, Clara, for thinking about the next steps. So that's what I'm going to ask uh, Sarah uh, to talk about next, is uh, how we look at uh, increasing our craft skills for 2021 in light of COP26. And we've had a question about COP26. Um, and this is uh, the conference that will be held um, in Glasgow in November, which was postponed from last November. And it's the bringing together of people from all over the world to discuss climate change and agree a way forward. And it's a really important event. Uh, there's plenty of information on uh, the Climate Coalition's website about it. 
um, as well as if you Google COP26. But if you want a more detailed answer, we can give that to you as well. Okay, so over to you, Sarah. Great, so I just wanna run through some ideas or possible inspiration for your own ideas to pop out of what to do next. So if you imagine this month was sort of your heavy investment of making a bespoke gift for your MP, doing your window display, giving gifts to people in your community to get them on board, that was like the catalyst and I've talked before about make sure your craftivism is seen as a catalyst not a conclusion you don't just do one thing and tick it off your list and go brilliant I'm done if anything it opens up more um, opportunities for conversation with people for more engagement for yourself as well and looking at the Q&A questions already you know it's not only about you telling other people what to do just by using the process to you can use that to think about well what can I do as an individual you know if I'm telling other people to make a change environmentally what am I also doing so it is about yourself changing as well as other people changing so I want you to see this month is like your big investment if you haven't already done it you still have time to do your hearts but then up until November and past November, you know, the Climate Coalition Show the Love campaign will continue and it'll be just as important next year with the results of COP. You want to see it as a marathon, not a sprint. So see your craftivism as your big engagement this month, but then you want to keep topping it up, keep nudging people, keep reminding people. So when it comes to politicians, whether it's your local, whether it's your MP, your local mayor, your councillors, whether it's business whoever the power holders are that you've made something for if you haven't already ask them have you received the gift I gave you just email them if they don't reply on email you could tweet them if they use Twitter find out if they've received it or not if they haven't already told you and ask if they could respond to the question you asked them which was the climate coalition question about being leaders in COP and signing up to the declaration so use your heart to see if they've received their gift, if they responded to your question, if they respond badly, that's still useful intel and data for you to follow up to say, well, I'd like to know more about why you decided that, here's more information from me. And then there'll be certain times throughout the year that you can use as hooks. So in this image, you'll see a lovely, um, I always think the power of handwritten letters, especially during lockdown, you know, think about handwriting your card, engage in the senses. You'll see on my envelope, I have an embossed stamp that says from your hands to mine, and it has a little wax seal. Can you make your envelope colorful so it's seen amongst the big pile from your power holders and from people you're giving it to? Can you have that handwritten element or that stitched element like you saw before from someone's stitched um, envelope? Think about those little nudges so you don't have to keep making more hearts because it might dilute your old heart, but you want to see it as a top up to keep that correspondence going, but in a compassionate way. So the next slide is an example of a, a good hook. So we have International Women's Day on the 8th of March, which seems to get bigger and bigger globally every year. International Women's Day has turned into International Women's Week. And then often people see the whole of March as about women. And I know Clara can explain more about how the Climate Coalition will be doing a lot on gender. So not just in terms of the leadership team in the UK for COP to have more women and diversity on that team, but also how we can get make sure that women's voices are heard, girls' voices are heard. So could you think about using, how can you use International Women's Day and that time of the month in March to engage with climate change? Because it is so relevant to be able to hook those two in together. There's a hashtag of she change, which is worth you looking into as well as something to connect with. So look at what other um, charities are doing around gender equality and climate, and you can attach your craftivism project to that you don't have to create your own campaign and the climate coalition is i think in a biased way the best place to start for how you can use the policy and the research they've done to then be creative about how to engage on gender equality within climate change the next one is we've and touched on it um, is about youth action. I do these stitchable dot to dot change maker cards and, and one of them is this great quote by Malala that I feel like is really important to remember with young people where it says we were scared but our fear was not as strong as our courage 
And we have to, you know, as adults, we have to be really careful as well that we don't just scare young people about catastrophe, but we offer them ways that they can take action in, you know, respectful, compassionate ways, in nonviolent ways that are responsible and safe for them but also be alongside them doing it. So I helped create the Craftivism badge for the Girl Guides and you can find out lots of actions you can take there and connect it with climate this year. We've got lots of projects on the Craftivist Collective site that you can incorporate into climate. And I know the Climate Coalition and the Coalition of Charities within there will have more as well. But craftivism is a great way to do it intergenerationally. I mean, I loved pre-lockdown and I loved going to WI groups. I remember going to the Brentwood Bells nine years ago now. Can you believe it? And we had three generations of women together. We had the grandmother, the mum and the daughter all together, stitching together and discussing climate change together. And so if you can work alongside the young people you know, whether it's online or offline, um, and offer them ways that together you can be part of that change in different ways, I think that's really powerful. You know, someone mentioned in the, the Q&A about how we can do stuff individually, you know, just stitching together or making more green hearts for your window together with young people to say, okay, while we're doing this colouring in, let's think about who our energy provider is. Can we afford to go with renewables? Let's look into it together. There was a great quote by Professor Brian Cox where someone called into him with a big science question and said, my son has got this big question. What's the answer? And Brian Cox said, I'm not telling you the answer. I'm going to tell you to go back to your son and say, I don't know. Let's find out together. So I think with Youth Action, it's using craftivism again as opening up those big questions, finding the answers together, being on the journey together and seeing what's possible with young people of lots of different ages. The next one is is just, um, so this isn't confirmed yet, so it's a bit of a teaser, um, but I'm working with the Climate Coalition and some others for a climate craftivism project that hopefully we'll do in the summer that directly links in with COP in November. So we'll launch it early summer or even before if we can, um, and then we'll have this project that anyone can get involved in in the UK and even further afield because the Craftivist Collective is global. Um, so there will be another, not so much a top up of what we've done in February with the Green Hearts, but uh, equal and even maybe more engagement project that then really is focused on COP and the November um, big event in Glasgow. So there will be a big craftivism project that I would love you all to get involved in. So keep an eye out on that and I'll be um, yeah, nudging you all to get involved if you can. So it is looking at those hooks in terms of timing, like International Women's Day, looking at inter using craft in an intergenerational way, which I just think is magical, um, and then look out for a summer project that we'll be doing together. Thank you, Sarah. That's brilliant. And then quickly from Fiona, um, she's going to tell us a little about what we've got planned next. So um, the WI is the, the NF, and the NFWI are the largest is the largest vo women's voluntary organisation in England, Wales, and the islands. So we have around two hundred thousand members, and so we want to use our voice um, to call on the UK government to deliver ambitious and robust climate action in the run up to COP, but which specifically ensures that women and girls will get a fair deal. So why are we doing this? So historically, we know that women and girls are disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change. Um, and that's particularly the case in overseas in, in countries found in the global south. So back in September 2020, when, um, if we can think back that, that, that long, um, the UK government announced the um, their negotiating team for COP26. And like other organisations, the NFWI were very disappointed that at that stage, every single member of the top team was a man. Um, based on a range of evidence, we know that when women are involved in climate decision making, climate agreements are, are stronger, more effective and work for a wider range of people. So 
Fr um, from pressure from civil society and other groups, um, that pressure has led to um, a few women being appointed to the COP26 top team, but we still feel that's not enough. So at, we will be asking, w, over the next few, over the next year, we will be asking WI members to call for proper gender representation and urge the UK government to diversify its team for COP26 ahead of the conference and to campaign for ambitious gender inclusive policies. Um, raise our voices and encourage women and girls to get involved in national and community level green projects and work with communities to raise awareness of the importance of COP26 and to amplify the experiences of women and girls who are vulnerable to climate change. So Beth, now the next slide, please. So to do all this, um, we're going to be giving you a range of resources and opportunities to get involved. So this includes educational webinars and talks and written resources. Um, and it will also include our normal loopholes craft pack. So this project pack will include um, some gift tags for you to attach onto the bracelet. And we would like WI members to produce two bracelets. So one for you to keep for yourself and another to be sent to a family, a member, a friend who may not know about COP and so to raise awareness of it. So next slide, please, Beth. And so just quickly on timings, um, we are going to make this action available from the middle of March. And so um, we're going to be having different sort of activity spikes throughout the year. So at the moment, we're thinking that in May, ahead of the G7, we'll be asking you and your WIs to come together to appoint a designated crafter, because as Sarah and Cara has mentioned, like you don't want to dilute the message of your bracelets and send lots and lots of them to decision makers. So we want you to appoint a crafter who will design a person or produce a personalized bracelet for your um, MP on for a key representative of um, the COP26 decision making team and send them to them. So um, we call them the No More Loopholes bracelet because um, a quote by Greta Thunberg said that COPs 26 manufacture loopholes and we thought what's the perfect craft to display a loophole activity it's going to be crochet so this is a simple crochet bracelet for you to make at home so I'm going to stop there to leave time for some questions and to hand back to Anne. Thank you Fiona. Uh, it's been a really interesting afternoon and I'm sure that some of you will need to leave now because we are coming up to two o'clock uh, but we can stay on for a further 10 minutes. I'm really pleased to say that our speakers are willing to stay on for a further 10 minutes. Um, so we'll try and answer some of the questions. So Fiona, can you uh, lead on the first question, please? Uh, you're muted, Sarah. Uh, Fiona. Sorry, <laughs> technology. Um, so Sarah Manton has asked, should we now start to create green hearts for all of the COP26 delegates? I know there are thousands of them, but there's many thousands of us in the WI. Yes, I'd like to uh, tackle that. Uh, shall I come in on that? Yeah. Um, so speaking personally, I'm like being aware of the environmental impact of resources and things like that. And you know, due to the volumes of people attending COP, we won't be advising this. We'd be instead encouraging you to produce our bracelets or to do other forms of craftivism that would help to impact COP26. So um, I don't know if any, Clara or Sarah want to come in on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, mean, I suppose, I, we're not here to say, do this, don't do that. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, all of this stuff makes an impact. I guess one of the things to say about COP26 is we're still in a very weird time mm -hmm. where we don't actually know who's going to be, you know, so the, they are just um, recently, they, the um, UN, it's the UN that hosts the conference, um, were really, um, and, and both the UN and the UK um, presidency really want something to happen in Glasgow, but it may be that it's much more scaled back. Nobody really knows at this stage. So I suppose what we don't want, although, you know, that might be nice, is for huge volumes of green hearts to be created that end up in Glasgow with only a small pool of participants. But I think, you know, it, it, yeah, it's all of this stuff can make an impact. But Fiona's right that um, by focusing in on specific activities, we can help make sure that this has a, a real impact. 
And I think this link links in with another question people have about, you know, there's so many things you could do. How do you know what to focus on? So I always say to people, focus on where you can have most impact, which is quite sober and sometimes because it can challenge you with what you're passionate about versus where you have the most impact. So it might be that you happen to be the niece of the Prime Minister of the UK or of Colombia. So of course you could do a green heart for them and engage with them a bit more. Or it might be that actually you have a lot of influence on local business because you're a local business leader. So maybe it's better for you to focus on, okay, I'm really going to push this in my business meetings I have, in my community meetings I have. So it's starting with where do I have most power rather than starting with here are all the options which one to pick so when it comes to cop with the members you know adding on to Fiona and Clara actually one of you know we this year have been focusing on MPs because as a constituent MPs are there to represent you so therefore they should be replying to your emails they should be inviting you to the surgeries in you know responsible ways in the in the lockdown that we've got so you, it's much easier to have a long-term relationship with them and keep those nudges than giving something to a cop member in a different country that doesn't have to engage with you at all because they're not accountable to you so i'd bear in mind who's accountable to you where's your influence and what yeah where you can have most power um, because then you don't want to burn out as well, trying to do too much, because it is about that quality rather than quantity. Uh, I hope that answers uh, Sarah's question. Uh, Fiona, the next question, please. Yeah, so the next question is from Marion. And Marion says that she's a huge fan of your work and approach, and I think that's directed to Sarah. Um, with any campaign, there are so many options, from what message to use to what shapes, material sizes, et cetera. How do you narrow down these choices? So I think that's primarily to Sarah. Yeah, so linking on with what we've just said of where can you have most power um, and with the time when you've got, with the location you're in, with the limitations you've got. And then it's, you know, again, focusing on that person you're giving the gift to, or if you're doing something for the public, that audience you're trying to engage and work back from what's the best way to engage them. So we've talked about giving gifts to power holders or handkerchiefs to board members, like we've said, but say if it's something you're making a street art, for example, because there's lots of examples in the slides that people have had today, focus on, well, who's gonna see this? So if you're gonna put something in your community, can you make sure that the image is somewhere useful for use online as well? So if you're gonna hang something up like the shop window that is opposite the constituency office for the MP, you know, that's really clever way of figuring out which location to put something than maybe somewhere that's hidden that someone might see. Or it might be that you say, actually, my council could do a lot more. So I'm going to focus on doing something outside the town hall where councillors might see physically, but also that image can be used in local media and it can be used on social media because you're not just looking at the craft, but the context of this is outside a town hall could have more impact. So you're always focusing on and I have a little uh, four minute animation that will include in the email links after this, where I go through focus on who are you trying to engage? Who, what power do they have? Who are they influenced by? What are you asking them? What's time bound? What's realistic? And then you decide all of the, the fun craft stuff, like what fonts to use, what colors, what visuals to take. So start from that power holder of why do you want to engage with them more than others? What's the message? what's the best way to attract them. And there's a brilliant quote by Maya Angelou that I regularly look at as a reminder as well. So not just focusing on engaging people's heads, but their hearts, where she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, which links exactly to what Clara said about how power holders by what you make engages them in a different way, but also in terms of whether you're doing public craftivism or gifts for friends or community members focus on what's that change you want to see why are you engage in that decision maker what's the best way to engage that decision maker and then you figure out all of the fonts and colors and styles to use to engage them that helps you narrow it down rather than sort of think too big uh, can i thank you all for answering the questions we really have run out of time unfortunately 
but the questions will be passed on to the panelists, uh, so we can have some answers to them later on. Uh, I'm now going to call on uh, Lynn Stubbings, the National Chair of uh, MFWI, and she's going to sum everything up and uh, end the meeting for us. So thank you all for attending. Thank you, Anne. And uh, yes, I'd just like to add my thanks to, to everyone, um, particularly for all those uh, WI members and uh, Climate Coalition members who've attended today. Um, I think it's been a, a great presentation and uh, it just goes to show that over the last few years, our members and members of the Climate Coalition have really embraced uh, our partnership, uh, the work between the WI and the, and the Climate Coalition. And it's great to, to have uh, Sarah and uh, the uh, um, uh, Creative Collective uh, on board as well. Um, our members have really embraced the Show the Love campaign over the last few years, and it, it, it grows uh, every year. Um, but the WI, of course, have been using craftivism for, for many years um, to highlight all sorts of campaigns. Um, and in recent times, we've had the Climate Scarf, we've had banners uh, about our end plastic soup campaign, uh, SOS for honeybees, and of course, uh, as you've seen in some of the slides, our members love to go yarn bombing. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun way of doing it. It's not to take the place of other forms of campaigning, of course, but as we've heard, it's just yet another way of having an impact. And it's a, as, as Sarah said earlier, it's a, it's a gentle um, and yet a powerful message to, to all those involved. So, uh, thank you to Sarah, to Clara and the Climate Coalition team, to Fiona and all our WI uh, PA team, and also to Anne for, for chairing this session. And uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, been participating for asking questions and, and for taking the time to, uh, to be with us today. And uh, good luck with, with all the uh, future craftivism uh, sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And just to remind everybody that uh, this session will be available on the NFWI YouTube channel. So uh, you can watch it again if you want to miss something or you want to share it with friends. Thank you all very much and uh, have a good 